passing through, notice we didn't have a deposit for $100. We had the deposit for $150 because there was a grouping of some kind of multiple deposits. So let's show that. Let's say we're gonna approve it and add another. Approve it and add another. And let's say this is uh, uh, customer number four. We'll say customer number four to make a new customer. And let's say this also happened in October, oct one, oct one. And it sounds like a, like a username or something, oct one, act one, oct one. This is gonna be sales of some kind, one, and this is for the $50, let's say. So now the two of these sales add up to the 150, this is gonna increase the accounts receivable and the other side is gonna go to revenue. Uh, so let's go ahead and say approve it and let's check it out then. Let's check it out. As soon as I get the green, go ahead. There it is. The green has told me I can move forward. So if I go into the accounts receivable, into the A to the R, the A accounts to the receivables, the R as the pirate calls it, R, the R account. There's the, uh, 50 and the 100 adding up to that 150 if i go back up and i go to my income statement now we recorded the revenue when we did the work so the revenue is already recorded even though we haven't yet got the money it went into the sales account here and if i check that out checking it out right now man checking it there it is and there it is so revenue went up Mui B to the N. Now we're also tracking this AR because we have to collect on the accounts receivable. That's the accrual component. Accounts receivable is an accrual account. Cash isn't involved with it. If it was a cash based system, we wouldn't have AR, but we have to have AR in certain industries because we have to track who owes us the money. So if I go back to the first tab, I can, I can track internally in the AR with the business drop down invoices. And we can then see we have these awaiting payment items. These are the ones awaiting payment. Uh, and so we can kind of track those out here. We can also track it by going to our contacts and look at our uh, customers. And we can see the outstanding balances, the outstanding balances. These, these balances are outstanding. Uh, that's not a good thing. That's not a good, but what do you mean? They're outstanding anyways. Uh, so these are our outstanding deposits. So then if I go back into my business drop down, and then I go into my invoices, I, the, the point is that when I get a payment, let's imagine that the payment processor or whatever is grouping these two together. So we saw on the bank feeds, it hit the bank feeds as 150. So if I tried to just match these invoices to the bank feeds, I waited till I got paid on the bank fees. Let's go back into the bank feeds. And I, and I look at that 150, it's gonna be a little difficult to tie out uh, these deposits to the bank feeds. Back to the reconcile. And then let's find that 150. It's actually 150, but 150 is how you say it when you're cool. That's how cool people say it. So anyways, here's the 150. And then, so it's gonna be difficult to match it over here. So if I go over here, I could do it, right? I could go to the matching and say, yeah, that's gonna be this and this. And, I, and then boom, you're good to go. You could do that, but normally that's not the most efficient system because that means you're gonna have to do like a bunch of work over on on the reconcile and the reconcile should be the if you have a good accounting system reconciling should be easy and oftentimes these kind of problems are caused by intermediary uh systems in there like financial institutions like paypals and stripes and there might be fees involved that kind of mess this up as well so this isn't so if you find yourself kind of having to tick off multiple things to tie out to a deposit you probably don't have the most efficient you know system you could probably do it better uh, because again the bank the reconciliation process should be as easy as possible so what would probably be better then is you could say as you get paid when you when you receive the payments you can go into your 
business drop down invoices and zero has this nice system if i go into the awaiting payment once we receive payment to click these two off now i can click these two off and uh make a deposit of both of them now and i can deposit both of them at the same time uh for the 150 dollars and that's uh great because then i can deposit it directly into the checking account and I'm showing 100, the 50 and the 100 detail when I check this out on the customer side, but when it hits the bank, it'll be there at 150 deposit, which will match easily. Zero will probably find it. It'll, it'll, it'll be able to match automatically. Now, I wanna just throw one more wrinkle into this that could happen, and that is that maybe there's fees that are involved. Maybe you have a, a PayPal or Stripe that's gonna have fees that kind of messes up the invoice to to when you get the payment uh, or uh, you might have other kind of receipts that you're also receiving through the credit card company or something for for not invoiced items but sales receipt items or receive payment items if i hit the drop down receive money so in that case you're getting other deposits maybe that aren't simply from invoices that are also being grouped in or you have fees that you're dealing with then this system will still not allow you to just deposit it directly into the checking account. That's when you might need a clearing account so that you can put it into the clearing account and then take it out of the clearing account and make sure you deposit into the checking account in the same format as will be seen on the bank statement. So let me see, let me just show you what that looks like uh, if you had to you do that system. And it really depends on how complex and what industry you're in usually and what payment methods you're using. How are you getting paid? So let's go to our uh, bank accounts and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another bank account but it's just gonna be a clearing account I'm not gonna connect it to the bank or anything so I'm just gonna say add another bank account and it's gonna try to connect it to the bank feeds and I'm like no uh, so let's say it was bank I'm just gonna choose the Bank of America and I'm gonna say Bank of America and then it's going to be like, do you want to connect to the bank? And I'm just going to say, no, I just really want to set up like an account that's a clearing account, but, but they don't care about that. So you don't have to tell them that, but that's what we're doing. So then we're going to say the account name is going to be cash clearing account, account type. I'll just call it uh, other, we'll say account number. I'm making up a number and us dollars minor in us dollars because i'm in the us and we typically transact using the dollar as the form of transaction although inflation is destroying it and uh at the moment which is a little frustrating to savers like myself that have worked hard and put them okay that you're getting off track so so now what i'll do is I'll go back into the business and then we'll go into the invoices and go into the awaiting payment and we'll select these two and I'm going to deposit them into the clearing account. So I'm going to say uh, deposit. Actually, let's do it one at a time so you can kind of see why the clearing account might be. Well, now I'll keep it here. So I'll deposit into the clearing account. Make up your mind. My mind doesn't like making up. It wants to change stuff all the time.